God is faithful to complete what he started. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we are in a special time right now. Of course, I believe everybody knows that we are in what we call a prophetic time or what we and one of the things we've got to understand is what is prophetic timing of God? Because this is perfect. It's something you, you can't receive the prophetic time unless you have prophetic insight. And that takes relationship. It takes personal relationship. Where you are living in the spirit with revelation. In James chapter 1, if you'll go there, please. The Word of God is prophetic. It predicts things in the future for your grooming. For your what? Your grooming. Your molding. The Bible says that we are to be molded in His image and likeness. In James chapter 1 and verse 2, if you'll speak it with me, please. My brethren, call it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> we are in a great time of challenges, of testing. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That word patience also means endurance. So things aren't going to go the way you think that they're supposed to sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, Amen. We have expectations. We trust God's word. Sometimes it's, it's not God's timing for that specific word to be made manifest. Again, God's word is prophetic. It predicts things in the future for our grooming. So he's warning us right here. He's telling us right here. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Hello. That's prophetic. You're going to fall into various trials. It says count it all joy. Don't be a wimp. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your faith, your faith produces patience. That's your relationship. Without faith, you can't have a relationship. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Again, we are in a time of great challenges of testing. Faith, endurance, patience, allowing it to, that, that perfect work to groom us into a perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. He's grooming us into a perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit so that we are complete and perfectly connected in faith. I'm going to say it again, but so we are complete and perfectly connected in faith. Do you know that when you are complete and perfectly connected in faith, you lack nothing? You lack nothing. It says, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, for God gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Wow. You know, when you look out your front window, it looks like the world is double-minded and unstable in all its ways. Again, we are in a time of great challenges of testing, faith, endurance, patience, allowing the perfect work to groom us into perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we are complete and perfectly connected in faith, lacking nothing, so we don't fall into doubt, so that we don't fall into fear, so we don't fall into oppression, so that we're not misled by emotional influence and become unstable or double-minded, returning to what is comfortable in our old ways. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5 and 6.
examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Again, examine yourself. Self-examination of faith. Only emotional decisions with grumbling and complaining and offense and doubt. There is no faith. So you've got to examine yourself. Where there's no self-examination, people go astray. We want to examine ourselves with the faith so that no emotional decisions and it causes grumbling, complaining, offense, doubt, or no faith at all. And most of this is because of there's not a true relationship. We've shared about some of this before. Where is that heart-to-heart -heart relationship? Again, people are still living out of the mind instead of out of the spirit. Now, you could be living out of the spirit and go right back to living out of the mind. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith or not. That's real simple. You'll know. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by what? Various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So in this, the testing is to see if your faith is genuine. It's genuine. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The testing of your faith, your genuineness, your relationship with Christ is seeing if it's consistent or is your relationship at your convenience? Is it consistent or is it at your convenience? In other words, you're living by emotion and not by relationship. You're not living out of the spirit. You're living out of your thoughts. We are in a prophetic time right now. There's a prophetic timing being released. That's when things that God has spoken has being released and many people are missing what's happening because they have no prophetic insight. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him has written to you as also in his epistles speaking in them of the things in which are some things hard to understand which untaught unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You, beloved, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to him be glory both now and forever and ever. Unstable souls can't see things through. And they fall from positional steadfastness, losing sight of their call, their purpose, and their destiny. They seek another path, not knowing that that other path is destruction. We see this all over the world, but greatly in the United States right now. Greatly. All eyes are on the United States. Unstable souls can't see things through. They fall from the positional steadfast, losing sight of their call, purpose, and destiny. 
and seek another path, not realizing it's a destructive path. But again, it's happening right now. We are in a time of prophetic timing. God's releasing. There's warnings, warnings, prophetic releases of warnings. In Joshua chapter 24, in verse 14, Now therefore what? Fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, me and my temple will serve the Lord. Amen? Me and my temple. Why? Because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. So many people haven't made that final end choice. They haven't come to the end of themselves to say, you know what? I'm done. I'm serving the Lord. There is no compromise there is. I'm not going to serve myself anymore. I'm not going to serve the world anymore. I'm going to serve the Lord. That's it. And Matthew 16, verse 1. Then Pharisees and Sadducees came in testing Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. We have modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees, let me tell you. And it said to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. He says, hypocrites. <laughs> you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. This is prophetic timing. They can't discern the season and time that they're in. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah, and he left that and departed. Again, many want a sign in, the, in their unstable state of being, not able to look beyond themselves. No spiritual insight on prophetic sight or prophetic sight. He called them hypocrites. This is a place where the enemy wants you always in a place where you question everything of God. That's called doubt. You question authority. You question God's words of promise. You question his will. That's called doubt. Amen? People walk in fear like crazy. That's what the enemy promotes, fear. And God's trying to release a prophetic timeline. He's a prophetic word of things that are happening so that we're awake to see what's going on so we don't get misled in fear and doubt. In Joel chapter 2 in verse 28 and it shall come to pass and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Is that happening? Yes. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. I want you to know that today is a blood moon day. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be a deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant of whom the Lord calls. Today is a full lunar eclipse. Lunar is when the earth is between the sun and the moon. 
It's an, a, a, a reflection causing the moon to become red or what we call a blood moon. This started today, November 8th. Red is a representation of covenant. The eclipse is a representation of judgment. So we got a red moon with an eclipse. Amen? And number eight means new beginning. And the storm that we're in right now is because that storm is going to spread globally. This is going to be a move of God. He has given a sign to his people. Why is it starting here? Hello, there's no coincidence to this. The storm starts right here. It's to dismantle the enemy's territory. This is the first time in history ever that a full moon, full lunar eclipse came to the United States on election day. It's never happened before. Never. Amen? That is God's prophetic timing. It is to awaken people, to give them a reality of who God is. In Luke 21, verse 25. And there will be what? Signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars on the earth, distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be what? Shaken. It says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, uh, again, we know prophetically that things sometimes start, but it doesn't end right away. It's a process. Sometimes things, have, even seals that have been broken, it's a process. It doesn't happen instantly. Prophetic words do not happen instantly. They're all associated with God's prophetic timing. Amen? Sign in the sun and moon and stars, earth distress, complexity, sea and waves roaring, men's hearts failing because of fear, the powers of darkness being shaken, says, then the Son of Man, after all of these things occur, and all these events will come. And we know that the Lord says, I will come to the body of Christ before he even comes. Amen. So we know that there's going to be a great revival. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my Father. You have given me wisdom and might and have, not, and have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. Again, God removes kings of authority and puts his kings of authority in place. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you, peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us what? Kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. He's made us to be kings and priests. Remember, he says he's going to remove kings, amen, and put his kings in place. That means he's putting in his righteous ones. Now, again, I'm going to share that one of the great signs right now that we are seeing is this blood moon on this specific day. This is a prophetic timing release where God is saying, I'm coming. 
I'm coming. There's something else that uh, I might have shared before, but this is a phenomenal also sign. I don't know if you know or not, but the Euphrates River is drying up. This is a prophetic sign. This is amazing. It's called the Great River. They showed videos of it. It is drying up. This can only happen in the end time. Amen. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. And its waters was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. And out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief, says the Lord. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. The Euphrates is drying up. It's known as the Great River. Great sign of coming end time events. You can't make that stuff up. In Revelation 9, in verse 13. Again, the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now, haven't been released yet. Now, the number of the army of the horsemen who was 200 million, I heard the number of them, but that's who will cross the Euphrates River. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. I get to remember that when he saw these things at that time in a vision, it, he can only explain the, the things at that time. He didn't know about jets, amen, helicopters and things to that degree. So thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, heinz and blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. And by these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which came out of their mouths. For their power is in the, their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver, bra brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thieves. That's why God went after them. In the book of Revelation 12, verse 7. Again, these are two prophetic timing release significant signs. And many people won't understand it or see it. Even in the, and many believers won't get it. In verse 7, let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? 
big time. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And I can tell you again, his time is short. We are in the end times. I'm going to close in Daniel 12, verse 1. And at that time, Michael, the archangel, shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, Israel. And there will be a time of trouble such as never was there since a nation. So Israel had to become a nation before this could even begin. Amen. Even to that time, and at that time, your people shall be what? Delivered. Everyone who's found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall increase. How about technology increasing? Artificial intelligence increasing. Amen. Moving people away from the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this riverside and one on the other river bank, on the river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. That means three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. That's why these words are now being released. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit's the one that gives you understanding. Amen? And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there should be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,355 days. But you go your way to the end, for you shall rest and will rise Arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. You know, nobody knows exactly the day or hour. Amen. But we're to know and understand prophetic timing. And it can only be done by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And those who seek and release. We are on the seek and release right now. We are waiting. Everybody said, the whole world knows something's about to happen. The whole world, they're, they're waiting for something to happen. They know that there's got to be a change. And there will be a change. We are entering a whole new reality. Things are going to be different. The economic, everything's going to be different. But praise be to God, you just got to hold on to Jesus, trust Jesus. Amen? And whatever happens around us is, should not affect us. Because we're holding on to the truth, we're living from the truth, and we live from the future, not from the past. We don't live from the present to the future, we live from the future to the present. And we hold on to the faith, amen, that's your connection. Remember, our faith is being tested. 
God wants to know whether we're genuine. He doesn't, I, I, he's looking for those who are solid, who are not wishy-washy. Who are not unstable. One day they want to do this, the next day they want to do that. Are you focused on your call, purpose, and destiny? This is what this is about. Let me tell you, you hold on to that, you'll be blessed. God will make a way where there seems to be no way, as long as you're out of the way. Amen? Cooperation is the key. Denying yourself is the key. Worship is the key. You get enough keys, you become a manager. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise be to God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace and faithfulness. <laughs> Lord, we live because you live. And we want to earn your trust, Father. So let these words that have been imparted to us in this prophetic timing bring us wisdom and understanding so that we can see things through and not fall short of our call, purpose, and destiny, but that whatever we do will bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.